Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Chris and this is my shop partner Oots and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I built this impossible dovetail mallet. Now legend has it that Abraham Lincoln designed this mallet way back in the day because he wanted to come up with a way to make a mallet that had a head that would never loosen or slide off the handle. Now the problem with these tapered dovetails is that it also makes it impossible to put that mallet on the handle. So there's some trickery to it. It's really cool. It was really challenging. A lot of hand cut joinery on this one and had a good time. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did to make this mallet. It should be a lot of fun. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take some rough walnut and hickory and dimension them down to the sizes I want. Once the walnut piece that I will use for the head is squared up, I'll make the hickory handle piece the exact same thickness as the head. Now I first learned about this mallet a couple years ago on my all-time favorite TV show, The Woodwright Shop with Roy Underhill, and building one has been on my to-do list ever since. Roy also wrote an article in Popular Woodworking Magazine about the mallet and explains that legend has it, Abraham Lincoln created a similar mallet with these tapered dovetails that would forever prevent a mallet head from flying off the handle. The problem was is that the same joinery also makes it impossible to assemble, but as you'll see later on, there's some pretty clever stuff going on to make this mallet possible. Then it's on to the meticulous task of precisely laying out all the joinery. On something like this where I want extreme accuracy, I'm going to use a marking gauge or a knife to make all my lines rather than using a pencil. Roy's mallet was really cool, but looking at his dimensions, there was a couple things I wanted to change. First I wanted to make the mallet head wider and heavier than his, which also meant I could start with a thicker handle stock and allow me to make the handle have more of a flare where it meets the head. Because of this change, I couldn't use any of his joinery measurements and I had to figure that all out on my own. But to be honest, that's one of my favorite parts of woodworking is actually designing and figuring out the joinery. So I actually really enjoyed that.
You can start to see here on the bottom of the mallet head that the dovetails are not only tapered but are also ramped. They almost touch that central mortise on the bottom. This and how you cut the dovetail tenons on the handle are the key to assembling the mallet. And you'll see that later on. And hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, but make sure you also hit that bell notification button so that you get alerts when I put out other really cool videos like this. YouTube will no longer let you know if I post a new video if you don't have that bell icon checked. And also, feel free to follow me on Instagram where I post lots of mid-project and behind-the-scenes stuff. And if you want to help support the channel even more, I have merchandise and plans over on my website for sale, or there's also Patreon if you'd like to help keep me doing these videos that way. Links to all that stuff is down in the description. And again, I want to thank everyone for all the support you show. One of the hardest parts of this project was figuring out the handle joinery. I wanted to leave the tendons proud of the mallet head and this caused some issues. I needed to take the measurements off where the top of the mallet was going to meet those tendons and then extend those lines up to where the end of the proud tendons would be. But because they're tapered dovetails, they continue to get wider past the top of the mallet and then they wouldn't fit through that tenon opening, that dovetail mortise opening. and so. I needed to know where I had to cut those back so that they wouldn't make it through. Needless to say, it took quite a bit of head scratching and having a set of calipers really helped making sure everything was spot on. And here is the real key to making this joint possible. You have to cut out curved sections on the two dovetail tenons so that they will bend and you can squeeze them together to start the handle into the mallet head. The biggest challenge of this project is that you cannot test fit your joinery first. You have to completely trust your accuracy and craftsmanship because once you assemble the mallet, that's it. It's not coming back apart. To start the handle into the head, I need to squeeze the tips together so that they will be able to start into that ramped part of the sliding dovetails. And as the handle is driven in, the outer dovetail tenons will follow those ramps and slowly straighten back out. Now because of the tremendous amount of force and pressure on the two components while assembling, it's vital to clamp the head firmly into a vise and also clamp the handle in a couple spots so that they don't break apart while assembling. If you're a touch too tight on your joinery, your head will either explode or one of the tenons will snap off. I've seen pictures of both, it's terrible. And because this is a bunch of fancy exposed joinery, you don't want to cut everything too loose because any gaps are really going to stick out like a sore thumb. But if you do everything just right, all the pressure is going to release just as it seats and your joinery will look awesome. Here the through tenons were hitting the screw on my vise before they could fully seat, so I took off just enough pressure on that vise to raise it up enough to finish seating the handle. I was still worried that everything could explode at this point, so I didn't want to take any chances. nothing. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I am um, 
Very impressed. My joinery did really well. Now what happened here in the middle is when I was driving that in and these what and these tenons weren't pinched, you know, they pinch at the end, but they're they're still straight at the base and they, they like round and bend to the top here. What was happening, I noticed when I was driving it in, was the bottom corner of this bottom opening in the head, the dovetail head, it's gonna be hard to explain, was digging into this edge on the outside of the tenon and compress those fibers. And that's what actually is causing the gap. There is a gap on each side and it got really bad right here where it basically pushed this corner in the edge on this tenon on each side. Now I took some hot steaming water and flushed it in there and it, and it spread those, uh, spread some of that wood fiber back out, but I can't complain. What I should have done was thinned out this, these two tenons a little bit more so that they actually compress, but this hickory is so, so hard and strong and stiff that it wasn't bending at all. I was really scared I was gonna break them. It's a, it's a delicate dance on having these just thick enough. I know Roy Underhill's mallets are thinner, and by doing so, you have thinner tenons here, and they have less to bend. That's probably why. I mean, for my first time ever doing it, I am just, I'm really, really happy because like I said, there's, there is no test fitting this thing. You just have to do the best you can laying out as accurately as you can and, and hope for the best. Hey everybody, I'm over at my friend Tom's shop. It's a beautiful dream shop and we're gonna be doing some turning. Now, if you remember about a year, two years ago, last time I turned, I turned these beautiful mallets and guess what? I'm back over here again doing another mallet. But let's jump over on the lathe. We're gonna lay out the shape of the handle and we'll get turning. That looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> that is a nice looking mallet. Wow. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I really had a blast making this mallet. I love making projects like this that challenge me and make me a better woodworker. And I hope I made Old Honest Abe and Roy proud with this project. So thanks so much again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.